since it became increasingly difficult to live in Kashan, Ahmad set out for Baghdad. It was 1858, about five years since Baha'u'llah had been banished to that city. After arriving at the house of Baha'u'llah, Ahmad was admitted for the first time into his august presence. Baha'u'llah turned to Ahmad and after greeting him warmly, jokingly rebuked him for hiding in a wind tower after becoming a Babi. Ahmad was stunned by Baha'u'llah's omniscience and incredulous that he should be aware of this incident which was kept secret from all but his immediate friends. Ahmad remained in Baghdad for six years and worked as a hand weaver. During this period, his soul was bountifully nourished by the glorious presence of Baha'u'llah. He had the great honor to live in the outer apartment of his house and bear witness to Baha'u'llah's charismatic personality and awesome powers. Ahmad remained in Baha'u'llah's presence until the Sultan's decree for Baha'u'llah's banishment to Constantinople was communicated. Baha'u'llah had left his home and had gone to the Garden of Rizwan. It was there that he made his public declaration and then departed to the lamentation and weeping of friends and well-wishers who assembled there to say goodbye. Selected believers accompanied him to Constantinople, while others, including Ahmad, were encouraged to remain in Baghdad. At the time of his departure, Baha'u'llah spoke words of consolation to those who had to stay behind. One of the friends recited a poem of Saadi in a voice filled with emotion and deep sorrow. Let us shed tears as clouds pour down in the spring. Even the stones wail when lovers part. Oh, 